is the United States Air Force standing in the way of UFO disclosure? Lou Elizondo chimes in. This is really interesting. Okay, before I get too far into it, please hit like, please subscribe, and if you do hit subscribe, please hit the bell next to it to be notified of future videos. As always, please comment below and let me know what you're thinking about all this as I'm going through it. Okay, here's what Lou had to say. Okay, this is from Joe Mergia's Twitter feed. Uh, Joe Mergia, if you don't know, is otherwise known as UFO Joe, and he is passing along some sentiments uh, from Lou Elizondo. Okay, here is what Lou had to say. Uh, so, not too long ago, an individual saw that the task force was doing quite well. People stood up and the Navy was doing its thing and everybody was supposed to report their incidents to the task force. So, an Air Force officer, I'm not going to say the rank or name or a station assignment duty or assignments, had come to the task force and said, Hey, I get information to report. I got information. This is not proofread. Uh, they said, sounds great, and they reported it. And we thought there was this new collaborative relationship. All of a sudden, everything goes silent, and when the person was recontacted, he's like, look, I got in trouble. That They did not want me reporting anything to you guys, so I'm just going to have to report this internally. So, that's the bad news. Now, the good news is that for every one of the, those cases, there's individuals, and again, another individual who I will not name, of course. Uh, maybe one day this person will become public. In fact, if they're watching the show, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There's a senior person that I work with, uh, a USDI, that happens to be in a very, very senior position now in the U.S. Air Force, who I read into the program, uh, this program, tangentially, because I needed some help back in probably 2015, 2014 timeframe. And that person is in a very senior position now. And that person's very sympathetic to this cause, uh, to this effort, and has offered to support this effort. And by the way, with a lot of authority, this person has in a really key position to support this effort and to help the task force and create a much more comprehensive reporting capability, including Air Force equities. So that's a big deal. So the first paragraph is about how the U.S. Air Force had originally looked like it was going to be more forthcoming with the uh, task force and more open. Uh, and then the uh, uh, rug was pulled out from under them a little bit. And it looks like the Air Force uh, was not letting their people come forward with this information. And the second paragraph is about how Lou is hopeful that that is going to change in the future and that the Air Force is going to be more forthcoming and join uh, the disclosure effort. Now, that's interesting because John Greenwald in the Black Vault uh, came out just a few days ago saying that the uh, UAP task force report had been co-authored by a, a senior person in the Air Force. Why is this significant? Well, because the Air Force arguably has the closest connection to the phenomenon in general. Uh, I think there are probably multiple UFO and phenomenon-related projects within the government and have been for a long time. Uh, but it is the Air Force that is probably... Uh, I mean, as far as we know, has, is probably the uh, most secretive and the most robust by far. Uh, you know, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, uh, Area 51, all that kind of stuff is uh, within the Air Force purview. And so they have been actively pursuing their, you know, reverse engineered alien technology interest, possibly even working with beings from the phenomenon, uh, you know, the intelligence behind the phenomenon uh, for quite a while. So the Air Force is deeply embedded uh, in, in, in driving whatever the government is up to regarding the phenomenon. If there is a breakaway civilization, if there is a breakaway group, as I suspect that there is, it is either in the Air Force or it began with the Air Force 
and is now largely, if not completely or almost completely, within the private sector as a way of hiding it from government scrutiny. In his book, The Day After Roswell, Colonel Corso talks about the infighting between the various branches of the military, how the Army wanted to pursue their interest uh, in reverse engineering alien technology. The Air Force had their own interest. Uh, They were all competing against each other for uh, control of this particular issue. And I think it's obviously obvious that the Air Force won that battle. I mean, they're the ones that have Area 51, uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, etc. cetera. Uh, they are the ones that, uh, you know, possibly are dealing with the beings themselves and have very sophisticated uh, programs involving deep underground bases and reverse engineered craft and, you know, who knows what else. But the Army was very successful uh, in their much more limited applications, and they were uh, farming this technology out to, uh, you know, the private sector and others um, to develop this technology. And that indeed led a lot of the technological revolution of the latter 20th, 20th century. According to Colonel Corso, much of our modern world has been created by reverse engineering this alien technology. Uh, And that is from no help, uh, with no help from the Air Force. The Air Force has secreted all this technology away and is using it for their own ends, uh, not sharing it with the public. Is that because the visitors don't want them to do that? If the visitors are stopping or suppressing the use of this technology, why did they allow the army to do it? Do they have deals with various people and they don't step outside of those deals? Do they allow humans free will? Interesting to think about and a little alarming. But the point is the Air Force has been very secretive. If there are men in black, if there is a breakaway group, like I said, it's it's coming from the Air Force. So uh, Lou is saying that he is optimistic that uh, that is going to change, that they are going to stop being so secretive and suppressing this issue, and they are going to aid in the disclosure effort. Uh, So I I hope that's true. I think that would be great. Um, You know, I'm not holding my breath. Uh, You know, if if a bigwig in the Air Force did co-author the UAP task force report, well, they didn't really spill the beans, did they? Of course, they did seem to get more juicy in the classified version of the report, at least according to Richard Dolan in his source, who says that uh, in the classified version of the report, they, the government did admit to having reverse engineered craft that they were flying, but only over the Air Force bases whatever, but they were admitting to having craft that they had reverse engineered from alien technology. That is very significant. And so maybe they are being more forthcoming behind closed doors. But what the hell is the Air Force up to? What have they been doing all these years in deep underground bases, if they exist, which I believe they do? What have they been doing in Area 51? What have they been doing uh, interacting with the visitors possibly participating uh, on certain alien abductions and helping the visitors with their programs. Um, If it's a technology, if they're trying to do this in exchange for technology, what have they been doing with that technology? We know what became of Colonel Corso's uh, technology, what, what he was able to do and his predecessors were able to do with the alien technology what has the Air Force been doing? They don't seem to have farmed that technology out. They have been hoarding it and developing it. For what purpose? Uh, Lou Elizondo is saying that they're going to be more forthcoming. Are they ever going to tell us that? Some are saying this is a seven-year plan for disclosure. Uh, At what year is that going to be revealed? I don't think that's going to be within the seven years. I think that's going to be year 70 or something if ever. Anyway, those are my thoughts. 
If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Uh, comment below. Let me know what you think about all this craziness. And as always, I would love it if you hit the subscribe button and if you do, the bell next to it. By the way, I now have a Twitter page. I just started a brand new Twitter page. Uh, I have like maybe one or two followers now. So please go and follow me on Twitter. And uh, I hope uh, to, to be posting lots of tweets in the days to come. I also have a Facebook page now. Uh, again, a link below to that. Uh, so I hope to see you on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, until next time, Cosmic Road out.